Welcome to the series, Narcissism and Leadership. We're going to be looking at how narcissism relates to leadership, how it affects leadership, and what one can do when one is working with a narcissistic leader. In this first video, we're going to be looking at what is narcissism. And we're going to focus on the idea that narcissism is a personality trait. Now, what do I mean by a personality trait? A personality trait can be defined as a person's habitual thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, kind of the way that the person does things that makes him or her different from other people. Now, when we think about ourselves and how we're different than other people, I say, oh yeah, I'm, a, I'm more extroverted. I like going out and meeting people. I'm more willing to do something. I, I feel more excited when I'm with people. When I'm thinking about my own personality traits, I look at my thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. But when others look at my personality traits, they just look how I tend to behave compared to others. How am I different or how am I same, the same? So that's what a personality trait is, either our habitual thoughts, feelings, and behaviors from our own perspective, or how others see us, see how we tend to behave. Now, one of the things about personality traits is that they're normally distributed, and that's what we've got the bell curve here for. What does that mean? It means that there's kind of like a normal level of some trait. So there's a normal level of extroversion or introversion, and most people are kind of in the middle, but then there's a few people that are at the extremes. And that's what how narcissism is. Most people are in the middle range. Some are somewhat above, some are somewhat below. A few are far above, and a few are far below. So this is in contrast to narcissism as a psychological disorder. Um, there's a, a, a diagnosis called narcissistic personality disorder. We're not talking about narcissistic personality disorder. Uh, a psychological disorder is when a person um, meets the criteria and has a certain list of symptoms that cause dysfunction or uh, they're, they're ill at ease in life because of those, uh, uh, that, that dysfunction. We're not talking about that. We're just talking about the behavioral tendencies of somebody. We're also not talking about a personality type. It's really easy to put people into categories as either this person is extroverted or this people is introverted. Now, most people are kind of in between, some a little bit more than others, but um, it's a continuous spectrum. And we're not saying that this person is narcissistic and this person is not narcissistic. There's a whole spectrum. A person can be more narcissistic than somebody else. Somebody can be lots more narcissistic than somebody else, but there's not a clear-cut category of a narcissist and a non-narcissist. So how can we uh, define narcissism? Well, there's actually quite a few different uh, definitions of narcissism. And typical definitions or typical descriptions and characteristics include, first of all, self-absorption, really being focused on oneself. Narcissus, where we get the word narcissism, is a character in a Greek myth who was really good looking. And one time he saw his reflection in a pool of water and he was just so impressed with himself that he stayed there forever. And he eventually turned into a, 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 a flower called the, the, the Narcissus. And that's, that's where we get the word narcissism, being so proud of one's own characteristics and thinking that one is so special or so good that that becomes the focus of their life. And so nowadays, I don't think anybody's looking into a pool of water and falling in love with themselves, but people do tend to focus on their attractiveness or their successes, and they start thinking that they are just really, really good, and they're really impressed with themselves. Um, a super major characteristic of narcissism is entitlement, the idea that I deserve more than other people because I am better than other people. And that's a, that's 
probably as close to the defining trait of uh, narcissism as as we can get when we uh, look at what happens in organizations and what and how leaders tend to act. There's also this idea of arrogance. If I'm absorbed with myself and think that um, I am so good, that means I'm better than other people and I will communicate that to other people, which is arrogance. Now, narcissism also is associated with a lot of other things. People who are narcissistic, we can be fairly sure that there's gonna be hostility. There's gonna be this idea of grandiosity that I am really great and I want other people to, to know it. And there's also the idea of dominance. I'm good enough to impose my will on other people and it's gonna be good for them. So these are typical uh, uh, descriptions that go along with a, a person that is narcissistic. Now, as you can imagine, some of these things can be uh, quite uh, problem, uh, uh, problematic. Now, I teach at Azusa Pacific and that's a Christian university and I'm a Christian, I'm really committed to, to biblical values. And we look at these this narcissism, and this is just a real major problem because what what does Jesus taught? Jesus taught that humility was the way to go, and that we need to consider people better than ourselves, and we need to be humble and and recognize our our limits, which is very different than narcissism. Now, to understand narcissism, one can uh, uh, break it down into three components of narcissism-related phenomena, things that we can, can look at that are associated with narcissism. The first one is the idea of the narcissistic self, how someone who's high in narcissism views them themselves. And there's the sense of specialness. There's this idea of high self-worth, that I am really someone that's, that's good, I'm special, I'm better than others. And the reason that they develop this typically is because of some positive characteristic they have. Um, narcissists tend to be good looking, they tend to be uh, successful, they tend to be competent, and they start focusing on the things that they're really good at, and that gives them that sense of, of specialness. This narcissistic self also has this feeling of entit entitlement that, whoa, since I am so good, I am so special, I deserve more than what I'm getting. I'm deserving what other people are getting. I'm, I, I have the right to this because I am, I am so special, which leads to the self-justified idea of dominance. If I know what is right and good and I'm superior to you, I have the right to tell you what you should do and how you should be treated, and it's for your good because I am better than you. So that's a narcissistic self. Secondly, there are narcissistic self-regulatory strategies, the way that we can kind of regulate our concept of self so that they, they stay in a situation where we're happy. Now, the purpose of these self-regulatory strategies is to protect the narcissistic self. We're all concerned about um, protecting our self-image. We want to think of ourselves as decent people. We want to think of ourselves as, as doing good. Everybody does that. Even the worst person in the world wants to think of themselves as a good person. So there's this tendency to, to, to do a lot of thinking and correcting of one's thoughts to maintain our positive view of self. Now, this maintaining a positive view of self isn't necessarily very difficult if we're aware of our limitations and understand that we're good in some things, but not in other things. But if we think that we are really better than others, that takes a lot of effort. And when we act with, uh, when we interact with others, to get them to confirm our worldview takes a lot of effort also. So the narcissist has to spend a lot more energy uh, protecting the narcissistic self than someone who has a less high view of uh, self, perhaps a more realistic view of self. So how do narcissists maintain a positive self-view? Well, they tend to do a lot of attention-seeking, getting people to pay attention to them, to recognize how good they are. They do admiration seeking, they brag, they show off, they talk about all the good things that they have done so that everybody will admire them. 
But then at the same time, when people don't uh, uh, respond positively to them and don't recognize their uh, um, their goodness, that's that's a threat to self. So the narcissist will respond, and typically that includes villainizing others. People can become the bad guys in the narcissist's uh, point of view uh, from the narcissist point of view really quickly. Um, they may ignore other people's ideas, but take cre take their ideas, take credit for themselves or for a team's work. We're getting back to this idea of villainizing uh, others. They may manipulate and attack coworkers so that the coworkers don't do anything that might distract from the narcissism's uh, positive self view, the glory of the narcissism. And when uh, people persist and say things that don't sh uh, make the narcissist, uh, don't shine a positive light on the narcissist or the narcissist's idea, narcissists often fly into what's known as a narcissistic rage. There's anger and aggression when their goals of being viewed positively by others are not achieved. And this can be one of the most destructive things in organizational uh, situations where someone who has a good idea is viciously attacked because the narcissist assumes that it puts him or her in a uh, negative light. So those are some of the narcissistic self-regulatory strategies. And then the third component of narcissistic related phenomena has to do with narcissistic relationship, how narcissists interact with others over periods. Now, generally, they have a lot of energy and enthusiasm, and that allows them to enter into relationships fairly easy because they're kind of like, they can be fun, interesting uh, uh, people to be with, but they have little empathy, um, which permit, doesn't permit them to grow close or intimate with other people. Their focus is on their own traits rather than the traits or the need of other people around them. And so the interaction is often becomes a manipulation to fit the narcissist's purposes so that the narcissist looks good. And when the person in, that they have a relationship with isn't causing them to look good, uh, the narcissist will put um, uh, a lot of pressure on them. We'll, we'll try to manipulate them. We'll try to get them to do things against their will through persuasion, through guilt, through trickery. Um, to get them to, to do what the narcissist wants. And so relationships with narcissists, whether they're romantic relationships or work relationships, are often a source of great pain and distress. So those are the three components of narcissism-related phenomena. Um, there's a narcissistic self, there's the self-regulation processes of narcissists, and there's these narcissistic relationships. Here's three questions that you can reflect on to help uh, process some of this. What experiences have you had with people who have had a strong sense of entitlement? So don't try labeling people as narcissists or not. Think of people who have felt entitled to things, the, the right to have things that um, maybe other people don't have the right to. And then what type of effect did this have on people? And what type of effect did this have on organizations?